Hello and welcome, my name is Amy Ash. In this video I'll be showing you how to turn a V-Face into a calibrated Z tool with multiple subdivision levels in Blender and Houdini. So let's take a look at how we would do this in Blender. And before you start, you have two options available to you. You can come to the V-Face tutorials page on the Texturing XYZ website, navigate to turn a V-Face to a ready to use calibrated Z tool with Blender page and download the sample scene. Or if you feel confident, you can create the node tree yourself. And if you click on this link here, they've provided an image of how this should look. The one thing to bear in mind is if you aren't familiar with these nodes, is that you can search for each of these based on the name at the top here, apart from these two. And these should be vector math nodes that you then need to set to scale. So I'll show you that now. So if we come into, I've just got a cube here. If we go into geometry nodes and click new, it will give me the group inputs and group outputs, which if you're familiar with shading will, will be fairly straightforward. So if I want to add those two scale nodes, what I actually need to add is vector, vector math. These won't work because it's incorrect right now. Uh, and then change that to scale. And that's the node there. But I'm going to open the scene that's been provided. So let's open that now. And what I want to do next is import the geometry. So go to import and wavefront OBJ, navigate to the head folder, geos, and let's open the eyes closed version. So here's our model, and we want to select that, and then we can click on new and then click on the browse node tree to be linked tab and select sub d from map and there we have our node tree and as i was saying if you click on these you can see that these are vector math nodes so what this node tree is doing is it's taking our geometry and subdividing it and then it's using an image input to tell the set position node here how far to move each point along the normal. So the first thing we want to do is come into the modifier properties here and make sure that we are setting vector to UV map. So click on here, click on this again and come down to UV map. Then we want to load in our image file. So click on the image texture node, come to open, navigate to the head folder, maps, and load in the XYZ discalibrated mid zero raw image. Then all that's left to do is to up our subdivisions on the model so we have enough geometry for the detail to be properly represented. So if we put in five, this will take our model to around 17 million polys and give us the detail that we need. It will take a while, so you'll need to give it a minute. And there we go, there's our model with all of the detail applied. So then all we need to do is export this. So we can go export, OBJ, navigate to where you want to export it to. And then we can call this face 77, high res. Click export. And it will take a small amount of time to export because it's a lot of information to write. Okay, so I'm skipping forward. It took a good few minutes to export, but here we are now. That's all exported, and then I can take that into ZBrush. To do this in Houdini, again, you have the option of either setting it up yourself or loading up a scene from the Texturing XYZ website. So to do that, again, navigate to VFace documentation and go to turn a VFace to a ready to use calibrated Z tool and select the Houdini option. And here you can download a sample scene. It does also show you the node setup that you need and all the settings that you require. So it's quite easy to follow. However, I'm going to go through and build the node network myself so that we can show what everything is doing and hopefully gain a better understanding. First thing to do in Houdini is import our geometry. So I want to go to file, import geometry, and we can load in the eyes closed version. Click accept. And then with your mouse hovering over the viewport, press space G to center the viewport over the model. 
Next thing to keep in mind is that the default viewport mode, smooth shading, will smooth out any details and make it very difficult to see if what you're doing is working correctly or not. So I would recommend coming up to here, click down and hold with the left mouse button and change it to flat shaded. Next, we want to double click on the geometry node to go inside it. And in the network editor here, we want to press tab and type subdivide to add a subdivide node. Press enter, click to lay it down and then connect it up. You want to make sure that this is set to open subdiv Catmull Clark, which is the same subdiv method that ZBrush uses. And then we can move on and reset this later uh, for speed. So next thing you want to do is add an attribute from map node. So again, tab type attribute from map, press enter, click to lay it down and connect it up. And what this node will do is that it will take the information from our displacement map and convert it into a point attribute called CD, which is basically a vertex color. So in here, we want to come up to the texture map field, click on this, navigate to your map, load in the disk calibrated mid zero raw map, click accept. And then we can move on to the next node. So again, once press tab, and this time we want to add an attribute wrangle. So type in attribute wrangle, press enter, and then connect it to the first input here. Now we need to give it a vex expression to tell it to move the position of each vertex along the normal according to the value contained within the CD attribute that we've just set using the attribute from map. Remember to set your display flag to the latest node as well, if you want to see what's happening. So that particular expression is on the texturing X Z website, if you want to uh, copy and paste it from there. But what we want to be putting in is the position, add or assign, the color attribute, times normal. And then we can just reset the color attribute by putting CD equals 0 0.5. Make sure you put a zero instead of an O. Okay. Now I'll just turn off this texture here. So I've gone to that there and turn off textures. Now we can see that it's already starting to have an impact on the mesh. So what I want to do is come back up to the subdivide and set it to a higher level. So if we go to five, that will bring us again to about 17 million polys. It will take a few moments to cal calculate. And then we can see the detail is applied to the model. So back in ZBrush, we can import our model. So let's go to tool import, load in uh, one of the ones that you exported. Uh, I'll load in a Houdini version here. So I'll click open. It will take a few minutes to load. Then once it's loaded, we can draw it onto the canvas. Click edit. And let's change this to matcap gray. So it's a little easier to see. Then we want to come into the geometry tab and use reconstruct subdiv to take this back down to the original resolution uh, that was supplied in the texturing XYZ VFace pack. So this should give us about six levels of subdivision. So click it and it will take a moment to calculate. And then we want to keep on doing that until we can't do it anymore. And again, so now we're at four levels of subdivision. So we should be able to get two more. Let's click one more time. And again, and there we have it. We're back at the original resolution that was supplied. If I try to click this again, it will tell me it cannot reconstruct it anymore. So what we have is six levels of subdivision with an extreme level of detail on that top level. So there we go. It was very quick, very simple and easy to do in both 
uh, Houdini and Blender. I would recommend using the sample files on the Texturing X Z website, uh, especially if you are fairly new to any of the software. Yeah, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope this video has been useful. There's lots more documentation on how to use VFace on the texturing.xyz website. My name is Amy Ash. I'm head of characters at Axis Studios in Glasgow. Uh, you can follow me on ArtStation and YouTube. Thanks very much and see you next time.